come to think of it, was there not another task we were to see to somewhere nearby? We shall have to decide which is the most pressing. We cannot do everything at once. This might contain useful information. Shall we take a closer look? Oxcarts make for relatively safer travel. Fewer monsters are to be found on the main road, though carts travel only by the sun's light. Here we are. I am well enough, thank you. Have you ever been at a loss as to how to proceed? Or felt like you'd forgotten aught but couldn't recall what twas? Well, whenever I'm lost, I go to a professional to have my fortune told. And around here, that's Ursula, the Oracle. Her services are not to be underestimated. Many a time has her advice given me a moment of pure revelation. So if you're ever in need of guidance, why not seek out an Oracle yourself? That'd be my advice. A crime committed here will see one confined to jail. I've heard that jailers are paid a pittance, despite the hardships of their work. Then a bribe might avail us, should the time come. What, pray tell, are you doing here? Patrons, connoisseurs, friends, my humblest thanks for joining me here at the unveiling of my collection's crowning jewel. There is much more I should like to say, but the anticipation is apt to kill me should I stall another moment. Let us gaze upon the sculpture now. <laughs> My word! It would appear I overestimated your ability. How dare you claim my gold for a clumsy attempt such as this? You have shamed me, and shall ne'er again know my patronage, Fulvio. Now gather your things and be gone from my sight! A dispiriting conclusion. It is a shame how the sculpture turned out. It is loathsome to be the bearer of such a great tidings. if you would. What, pray tell, are you doing here? Just let it end. I don't want to think... I swear I'll wring that incompetent sculptor's neck. What a fool I was to place my faith in him. This way, master.
I know Clark wasn't pleased, but that was the best I could manage. I shall strive to improve, and perhaps one day he'll think better of me. Would you mind coming over here? There's comfort in the humdrum of daily life. We shall remain here. We're not to talk during missions, sir. I'll not tolerate your presence a moment longer. I have no time to waste on the likes of you. What is your purpose here? I am in no mood to consort with riffraff. I've naught to say to the likes of you. I trust that you shan't cause a stir. Ellen, Sir Augustine is to return. I've no time to entertain the likes of you. I'll not tolerate your presence a moment longer. I am well enough, thank you. Days are so tranquil. Dull days for us are a dull Perhaps I'll have a nap. Life. 
It is good to be of good tidings to you. Now seems a fine time to sort through your belongings, Master. If you feel overburdened, mayhap I could carry some things for you. Aye, got some coin to spare your humble storyteller. Much appreciated. You're the Arisen, aye? There's aught I'd ask of you. A personage of great esteem is to return from Batal to Vermin. I speak of Sir Augustine. He is a noble and the leading voice of opposition against the Queen Regent. Your aid is requested in guarding his ox cart as it travels the high road. As a potential ally to your cause, it would do you no favors if he were to come to harm. And bear in mind that this is a matter of the utmost secrecy. Not even the captain of the guard has been informed of it. You have your orders. Read them and follow them to the letter. We must fly to the aid of those in need. Treat your ears to a tale by a master storyteller. And should my story entertain you? Nay, even if it shouldn't, I would greatly approve you. Tis all rather sudden, but I suppose we've no reason to refuse. Shall we make for the point of departure? Follow me, Master. I shall guide you to the location. 
We're in your hands, sir. Much obliged. Might as well take a look while you're here. This is a luxury. I've been there before.
so I can handle this. I'll need to replenish my stock. Fine here. I can't go on like this. Got to work if I'm to put bread on the table. You! How might I be of service? All this hustle and bustle puts me right at home. You! Even the drone. My, my. I'm trapped like a rat in a cage. This arisen's both shrewd and fleet of foot. What? Can't you think of a reason? I'd thought you were keener wit than that. Let's just say there are some who don't want you wandering about as you please. I was to report on your comings and goings, you see. But I suppose that job's over. Now you found me out? So, how about it, friend? Will you let me go? I've no reason to trouble you any further. Understandable. Still, no harm in asking, was there? Let's get this over with then. Whoa! You there! Halt! Shit! We're in for it now! With all likelihood, he is an agent dispatched from Batal. Pray, let us handle the rest. We will hear all he has to say before the week is out. I bid you, wait till then.
Got some coins to but much appreciated. Gather round, gather round. Treat your ears to a tale by a master storyteller. And should my story entertain you? Nay, even if it shouldn't, I would greatly appreciate a coin or two to soothe my throat with a mug of ale. Now, listen close, and your focus applies to this tale of a giant who touches the sky. Our hero, oft forgotten by history in spite of his word, awoke one fell morning to rumbling earth. In a panic he started, out the front door he leapt to behold what had approached a night as he slept. T'was a mysterious figure, but be it friend or foe, on shaking legs did he approach the better to know. Yet he did not get near, for afore him stretched the sea. The figure was striding through waters up to the knee. This realization explained the bazaar. What had appeared close was being seen from afar. For truly, the figure was mammoth in size, tall enough to be blinded by the clouds in the skies. One thing was certain, should it walk upon land, no city, no mountain would outlast its hand. So he challenged its ingress with voice loudly drawn, and in an instant the giant was gone. I, in the face of his valor, the gigantus did pale, but who among you can name the hero of our tale? T'was none other than Lord Rosamond who, needless to say, was the father of House Birkin, which lives on to this day. Oh, sir, if you please, pray excuse my boldness, sir. I am but a humble maid in service to a noble household. Might I beg a moment of your time? My master is in need of aid, you see, and I'm hoping you'll consider offering your assistance. Oh, thank you, sir. You cannot imagine my relief. Might we continue this conversation somewhere more discreet? The matter it concerns is rather sensitive, and I would not risk being overheard. You will find my master's manor in the noble quarter. Pray, meet me there at your earliest convenience. I'll gather this. It might be of use. This calls for a curative.
Times on end. This place offers a view of the sea. I imagine we would not escape a plunge into the Rejoice, my darling, for your Albert is returned. Welcome home, dear. I spend my days spinning yarns, only to come home to a wife for whose radiance I have no words. If there is a more fortunate fool in the city, I have yet to meet him. Oh, you bold-faced flatterer! A fine place to harvest some ingredients. Shall we see if there's all to be found while we're here? A few hours sleep. Oh, I've not the patience. What would you of me? I'll have no trouble, thank you. We have found a material. I'm sure we'll find a purpose for it in due time. Well met. This here is the sanctuary of tipplers and merrymakers alike. I assume you'll be starting off with a mug of the good stuff. Well, I ne'er. Go on, have a look. Interested in my wares? Well met. This is... I assume you'll be starting off with a mug of the good stuff. Keep those orders coming. This fearsome world of ours is best met with stiff drinks and cheery hearts. Will this take long? I've ought to be doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg a moment of your time. Oi, keep your distance. Is it true you're the Arisen? That's what I've... Only, I seem to recall someone else boasting of being the Arisen over in the tavern about six months ago. Just be sure you play your part well, whatever the truth. The Arisen takes the crown here in Vermont, after all. A fellow Drake or two, and I reckon you'll earn the people's faith. <laughs> Good luck to you. Listen up, you lot. Aye, the ale's on me tonight, so drink up, my friends. Drink your fill. Will he truly be all right? That woman's taking advantage of us, she is. She... Oh, 
Well met. I assume you'll be starting off with a mug of the good stuff. Many thanks. Interested in my wares? Proper nutrition. Oh, well met, sir. Come to think of it, was there not another task we were to see to somewhere nearby? We shall have to decide which is the most pressing. We cannot do everything at once. The more the merrier. Can't help but talking of this one. I have a note from me with the best of you. Oh, I hope the weather holds. Isn't there anything to do? The same. They are. Today. This place just cheers me on. Perhaps I'm just left in the pantry. You could I had a helping hand. Take it easy along the day. Welcome. I'll not take that. There is much we ought to tend to, if we are to strengthen your majesty's claim as a true arisen. Ah, yes. Regarding your pursuer from some days past, as we suspected, he was indeed an agent from Batal. When he learnt of your majesty's escape, he began inquiring after your movements. Tis a glad thing we captured him before matters escalated. As to how he learned your majesty's location with such ease, I intend to extract the answers from him anon. I shall be sure to inform you when I do. Pray, take this. Tis the least I can offer for your majesty's assistance.
So the agent was of Batal, after all. Tis rather eerie that someone should be sent across the border to spy on you. Welcome to the Star Drop Inn. We serve all manner of fine ales here. Shall I pour you a cup to... Whatever am I to do? I don't like the look of this. Acting up. Peril on the roads puts a strain on... I've never heard such nonsense. Beg pardon, sir, but might I have a moment of your time? I've a proposal to make, and methinks you'll want to hear it. See, a friend of mine has an empty house, but no use for it. And I see you round the inn rather often. Understand me? Couldn't come free, mind. But the price is a fair one, and you'd have a place to call your own. What say you? Well, you needn't decide this very moment. Come speak with me again once your mind's set. Off with you. Only tis here that the bodies of those who fall in vermin are first kept and tended to. I beg you to conduct yourself with care and with a reverence befitting of one who walks among the dead. Your patronage is much appreciated. Ah, now here's a surprise. A splendid discovery. Interesting. I shall have to inform my own master of this. A certain standing is required to be here. You need a permit to enter Batal, but they've become quite difficult to acquire of late, unless you're a merchant. 
Mind, rumor has it that it's easier for Beastrons to obtain them. Perhaps because Batal's more of a Beastron nation. That's led to some people acquiring Beastron masks, of all things. Seems a bit much, if you ask me. Come to think of it, I've nary a clue as to where one would go to apply for a permit to begin with. Perhaps you would indulge me in conversation? We shall await you here, Master.
I have been waiting for you, Arisen. An ox cart ought to make our journey easier. Walking everywhere is certainly tiring. Gather round, gather round. Treat your ears to a tale by a master story. I got some coin to spend. Much appreciated. by a master storyteller and should my tale entertain you nay even if it shouldn't i would greatly appreciate a coin or two to soothe my throat with a mug of ale now listen close as today i shall speak of riddles and monsters with frightful mystique in the north of vermont is our curious tale staged where ventured a hero off left off the page. He delved into a temple of baleful feature, only to be confronted by a four-legged creature. But when our hero drew his blade, unto Come to think of it, was there not another task we were to see to somewhere nearby? We shall have to decide which is the most pressing. We cannot do everything at once. for shock and dismay as answer my riddle did the fearsome thing say the trickery was clear to respond meant certain doom but in the midst of his answer he'd doubtless be consumed so a mighty attack did our hero dispense to conquer his foe and banish it thence with a single strike was the towering beast repelled to quail in fear at the mortal strength it beheld. Such is the legacy of Lord Rosamond, who, needless to say, was the father of House Berkeley, which lives on to this day. Gather round, gather round, treat your ears to a tale by a master storyteller. And should my tale entertain you? Nay, even if it shouldn't, I would greatly appreciate a coin or two to soothe my throat with a mug of ale. Now, listen close, as today I shall speak of riddles and monsters with frightful mystique. In the north of Vermont, is our curious tale stage, where ventured a hero off left off the page. He delved into a temple of baleful feature, only to be confronted by a four-legged creature. But when our hero drew his blade, unto him a demand was made. And who the asker? Why, the beast! An uncanny affair, to say the least. Yet 
there was no time for shock and dismay as answer my riddle did the fearsome thing say the trickery was clear to respond meant certain doom but in the midst of his answer he doubtless be consumed so a mighty attack did our hero dispense to conquer his foe and banish it thence with a single strike was the towering beast repelled to quail in fear at the mortal strength it beheld. Such is the legacy of Lord Rosamond, who, needless to say, was the father of House Berkeley, which lives on to this day. Gather round, gather round, treat your ears to a tale by a master storyteller. Then I shall remain by your side. Now, listen close, as today I shall tell of a serpent with powers most fell. Our hero ventured into a shrine long enclosed. Whereupon he found serpent and soldiers in battle opposed. Though to the soldiers' aid he would fain have leapt, unease overtook him, so behind a pillar he crept. And not a moment too soon, for there came a flash of light, ere the room filled with screams, soldiers wailing at their plight. Then the shrine grew deathly still, and our hero was all alone. For every last soldier had been transformed into stone. Wary of his foe and with presence of mind, the man crept up to the pillar upon which it was entwined. Seeing his moment, he unsheathed his blade and brought the pillar low in a thundering cascade. The gloating serpent was caught by surprise and with a pitiful hiss, neath the pillar it rides. Till mustering swiftly the last of its might, to the depths of the shrine did the monster take flight. Thus with a wit as sharp as his sword was honed, did our hero put an end to the threat imposed. And who was our hero? Why, needless to say, it was the father of House Berkeley, which lives on to this day. Come to think of it. 